Are you an all-time great at Arizona State? If not, do you have an old connection to Herm Edwards? If you check either of those two boxes, congrats on being added to the coaching staff of the Sun Devils as an analyst. The latest name on that list was announced by the school on Thursday morning as former ASU receiver Derek Hagan was named an offensive analyst for his old program. We are extremely pleased to be adding Derek Hagan to our coaching staff, Edwards said in a statement. I am enthusiastic about what Derek brings to the table as not only one of the greatest receivers in school history, but as a former NFL player as well. He will be a valuable asset to our staff. With all of the positive things that are happening with Sun Devil football I wanted to be a part of that, Hagan added. I wanted to do something to help Coach Edwards and the staff take the program to the next level. I had a nice high school career, but ASU is the place in which I elevated my game. It started daily in practice and eventually carried over to the games. There's nothing like the maroon and gold. Hagen starred in Tempe from 2002 to 05, setting numerous offensive records at the school and leaving college as the all-time Pac-12 leader in receptions. He was a third-round pick by the Miami Dolphins in the 2006 NFL draft and played for parts of eights in the league. Former NFL offensive lineman Kevin Mowai and school legend Danny White are among those who are also involved with the program in an off-the-field role. For the second time this off-season, Dion de Francois is facing an off-field situation. According to the Tallahassee Democrat, Francois is currently facing a misdemeanor charge connected to the possession of pot. The Democrat writes that the Florida State quarterback was given a notice to appear in court by Tallahassee police and faces a charge of possession of fewer than 20 grams of marijuana. It's unclear what led up to the charge. We are aware of the situation and it is being handled internally, first-year head coach Willie Taggart told the newspaper in a statement. In January, police were called to the apartment that Francois shared with his pregnant girlfriend because of an alleged domestic incident, because of conflicting statements and lack of independent witnesses. However, no charges were ever filed in connection to that incident. Francois started all 13 games under center for FSU in 2016 as well as the 2017 opener before going down in that loss to Alabama with what turned out to be a ending knee injury. He has been limited this spring as he continues to recover from that injury. It appears the depth in George's receiving core could be taking a hit in the not-too-distant future. Thursday, head coach Kirby Smart revealed that Michael Chigbu may be thinking about hanging it up. The wide receiver has dealt with nagging and lingering shoulder and knee injuries over the past twos. While HES been thinking about retiring from the sport, a final decision HASNT been made. Kirby Smart said Michael Chigbu might be thinking of retiring from football. Dealing with some injuries, he said, Jason Butt at Jason Butt April 12, 2018 A three-star member of the Bulldogs 2015 recruiting class, Chigbu was rated as the number 18 player at any position in the state of Louisiana. Chigbu enjoyed his best as a true sophomore in 2016, starting seven of the nine games in which he played and totaling nine receptions for 88 yards, after not catching a pass this past. He has 13 receptions and 116 receiving yards for his career. UCLA missed out on one graduate transfer quarterback this week and another one last month, but it appears the Pac-12 school has finally landed one. On his personal Instagram account Thursday night, Wilton Spate announced that he will be transferring to the Bruins to continue his collegiate playing career. The 2018 will be the quarterback's final year of eligibility. Spate announced his transfer from Michigan in late November, but it was reported in January that he was putting off a decision on a new school. Later that month, reports surfaced that Spate would consider a return to UM if Ole Miss transfer Shea Patterson, who's still fighting the system, was denied his appeal for immediate eligibility late last month. Head coach Jim Harbour confirmed that the door was open for a Spate return. With this move, however, it appears that door is closed, Spate's announcement, though, could be a good sign for Patterson's situation. The starter for the vast majority of the 2016, Spate began the 2017 as the starter as well before a late September back injury knocked him out for the remainder of the Spate finishes the Wolverines portion of his playing career with 3,192 yards, 22 two counts and 10 interceptions. Alabama's Nick Saban probably doesn't mind chomping into an orange when he wins the Orange Bowl but the Crimson Tide head coach took a big bite out of a different kind of citrus fruit in order to raise awareness for a child's charity. Jumping on board the latest viral video craze to draw attention to a cause, Saban happily bit into a very sour lemon this week as part of the appropriately named Lemon Face Challenge. 
The reason to call attention to one one-year-old Alabama native Aubrey Nicholas and her Facebook group called Aubrey's Army. The group is seeking to inform people and raise money for the rare brain tumor Nicholas was diagnosed with called diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, or DIPG for short. Here's the video posted on the group's page. DIPG is a devastating diagnosis for both children affected by it and their parents as it is inoperable so kudos to the normally stern-faced Saban for taking the time away from spring practice to make the video. A You Caring page was also set up for Nicholas Medical Expenses and has raised nearly $40,000 at the time of this writing of a $50,000 goal. Hopi Saban's video is enough to help push that total over the top in the coming days as the Facebook video has zoomed past 100,000 views in just the short time since it was posted.